Well, thank you for joining us as we go through the book, uh, What If Jesus Was Serious by Sky Jatani. We are on chapter 23, uh, which is if Jesus was serious, then we will take sin in our lives seriously. All right, so this is this is definitely, I mean, I think a connection to chapter 22. Yeah. So I think it's really good to anyone, um, you know, like it, making sure that you you read chapter 22 before you read chapter 23. It definitely helps with, with that. And it's and especially the Sermon on the Mount, because we're on uh, Matthew 5, verse 29 to 30, which just follows right after that talk about lust. Uh, so this is where we are. Uh, if your eye, even your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your hand, even your stronger hand, causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. That's an extreme statement. That, that is an extreme just, statement. That's extreme. Yeah. Um, uh, so he does, Sky actually says you know, that, that uh, people have taken this literally. Uh, self mutilization be, to become a way to a, as a way to avoid sin. Well, that's um, not what I signed up for. Well, I know that's just like where it's like. <laughs> I think I think I think he actually wrote down. Thankfully, most scholars agree that this was hyperbole. Yeah. Now I want to say Jesus when I was, was reading, exaggerating. Well, no. Yeah, exactly. Well, when I was reading. I was reading about people now. Like this is something that happened, you know. I don't even know how fifteen hundred years ago. Nothing recent that I've read. Um, maybe there's something like that. But of a story of someone who did cut something off, then realized maybe that was wrong some years later. Mistake. Yep. Uh, as a, I think, as a way I think to, I've watched a movie about this too. <laughs> maybe. Anyway. It's sort of like, you know, but still like, coming out years later, like, oh, maybe that was wrong. It's like you can't take that back. Yeah. So what, what was Jesus trying to say? <laughs> well, okay. So it looks like there there are two views. Um, typically, one is is yes, this is an exaggeration. Thankfully, um, but it's still ex a, an extremely serious point of view. Uh, it's a call to stern discipleship, and and I think I would actually say this is the kind of what I have understood it in the past. This stern discipleship. Uh, especially pointing to areas of, of weakness in our life. And, mm -hmm. and and I think there's still something to it. I don't want to dismiss that. Completely. So Jesus is exaggerating the point to say, you know, you better take this seriously. That's right. Um, What's the, the other second, view? The second view is basically the idea of, uh, of, it's a form of sarcasm or rabbinical sarcasm. It's not, it's, in the deed, it's not meant to be taken seriously, making the point, basically absurd and focusing mm -hmm. all on the ex basically external rule following emphasizing that no matter how much it cut off it's again kind of it's a hard issue yeah. and as much as i don't want to dismiss outrightly one the first view i found very compelling in the second view much mm -hmm. basically because it kind of follows suit to what Jesus has been talking about with the idea of anger and lust and the idea of what lies underneath it that is feeding. And so, yeah, lust can be expressed through eyes and hands, but it originates in the heart. In the heart, yeah. And it's not really a body issue. Therefore, so whatever extreme approach we can take to the body, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to solve what's going mm -hmm. on. And I think we've all experienced this. We've all had, you know, made a new year's resolution not to eat so much. And we look at the scale and, and we, Oh, we better do make a change or, or, you know, uh, things like that. Or we even more serious issues like pornography or um, hateful speech and we, we have good intentions and we we manage to discipline ourselves rigorously for, oh, maybe about two, three, four weeks. And then it starts to slip because we just um, we don't, I think, have it within ourselves to sometimes make the drastic changes that are needed. Yeah, absolutely. And it can be a lot. I think, the though, if we 
take this title even serious of this, of this, the, I know like we, it, if we will take the sin in our lives seriously, when it becomes this outward expression, it, it really is a way to make it look like we're taking it seriously, even extremely yep. seriously. Uh, yet it's only surface. And I think it's, it, it's, I think it's really tempting to do that. Mm-hmm. And it can really look good for everyone looking. Um, and again, Dallas Willard said this is actually a typical typical mistake that's made, uh, trying to control the act instead of really changing the the source. And again, it really seems to fit in my mind the flow that we're seeing through the Sermon on the Mount. Mm-hmm. Um, that there's something it's something deeper within us. It's you know, and even if we read further on, like you know, when he talks about you know the religious leaders, you know, again, it's just sort of like, hey, all this outward stuff, who's that for anyway? Yeah, you make it look good. And I think this was yeah. in a different chapter, too, that we talked about this, about our image and who are we doing yeah. it for. Who are we And in doing this particular case, um, we're sort of looking at the other side of that, kind of behind the curtain. And we really have to deal with the heart issues in order for change to take place. Because that's where the source of the problem occurs or happens. So unless we do something about changing the source, uh, we can change the actions all we want and they'll just keep coming back. Absolutely, and and I think uh, which I think it leads to uh, we just, the idea of being said here. It's really not talking against discipline. Oh. And here, 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 us. We're not talking against discipline. What we're saying is new behaviors, uh, or the discipline that will come needs to really be the outcome of the transformed heart. Yep. Um, when we partner with the Holy Spirit, because we're going to need some strength. As yep. we want to see the discipline, and that's going to include discipline. Yep, that's going to be an outcome, and some it might need to be extreme discipline. Yep. Uh, we're not saying that that's not. We're just saying it's not just extreme discipline. We need to partner with the Holy Spirit, and we need to be a focus on our heart. Yeah, and there I think is a beautiful balance. We don't necessarily have the power within ourselves to make a change, but when we power with the Holy Spirit, saying, "Look," or when Jesus said, you know, follow me, we do it his way instead of our way. When we give up control of trying to do it ourselves, partner with the Holy Spirit to make the life transformation. But that still requires us usually to do something. We have to be uh, intentional about letting the Holy Spirit do it. And we have to take some steps towards it. And then I think the Holy Spirit takes over where we have true weakness and we end up having a changed heart where yeah, if we just were left to our own devices, uh, eventually it's unlikely things would change. Yeah, so in a lot of ways, living out is, is almost a combination of the two views. You know, it, yep. it is basically if you just are, are going to walk out in the stern discipline, uh, it may not really do truly anything to what's yep. going on inside. And um, But if if we can see that, you know, just doing that, but it's got a heart issue that needs to be changed. Uh, again, discipline that that will will probably follow in a lot of respects, but we're doing it through again a heart transformation. Yeah, and I think some people have just, that idea they're going to say a prayer and God or Jesus is going to change them instantly, and they never have to deal with that issue again. And that's just not the way it works. Well, and and I mean, even a lot of things when we talk, you know, talk about, you know, people who are struggling with with addictions and things like that, like it it really isn't just stop doing the addiction and Mm -hmm. and stop and putting all of these boundaries up to stop doing those addictions, much as those can be good and helpful in a lot of ways. You know, like anything, if you're going through, whether it's a 12-step program, you're going to some sort of therapy, it's not just about stop doing this thing that's damaging, it's figuring out what's in here that that thing that addiction you're using to be a coping mechanism Mm -hmm. you know and and i think i think that's where we we do that in so many things it's just like we need to deal with that thing in here that's using this thing again as as some sort of medication and stuff like that and thankfully jesus did promise a transformed life and heart so um, i think that kind of sums up what we're talking about today so if you've been following along with us uh There are some questions that are uh, associated with this uh, talk today, and you can look those up. Uh, The link is in uh, the show notes there. And um, 
uh, questions are good for processing the information that we've talked about today and having read the chapters so that you can really uh, uh, kind of get let this sink in and, and help you to understand better what Jesus was talking about. And uh, if possible, to talk with a friend or someone, uh, you can, you, can uh, you know, share some some deep uh, conversations with. And for those of you who are part of our church community, sharing in our missional community uh, is a great way to be able to process this information. So thanks again for joining us and hopefully you'll continue on and uh, join us uh, next time.